Okay, so before I really dive into this video, there are two things I need to make really clear. Firstly, a lot of the information discussed in this video does indeed point toward Shannon, however, because of her own statements and her inability to provide evidence that these claims are false, I operate under the pretense that these allegations are alleged or supposed. Obviously, that does not mean I don't have my own opinions on whether or not these allegations are true, though that will likely be discussed in the second part of this series. Secondly, I want to make a really quick disclaimer in regards to my own relationship with Creepshow Art just to ensure that no one gets the wrong idea. I have spoken to Creepshow Art or Shannon on multiple occasions both in private and public settings. She has supported me multiple times on her own channel, even shouting me out at times and commenting on my videos in support of my content. One huge example of this was on her video titled The Worst Mommy Blogger Ever where she spent like two whole minutes just ranting and raving about my channel and how much she enjoys it which I honestly really appreciated. Before I jump into this situation and go over all the ins and outs, I want to do something that's really cruel and hurtful and mean. And I want to prank a channel of someone who I personally adore and think you guys will appreciate as well, that being Omnia here on YouTube. Like this girl, her mind, chef kiss. It's beautiful. And I think it would be really like cruel and underhanded and sneaky of all of us if we all went to her channel and like subscribed or something. Like in a mean prank way. And like also if we went to comment on some of her videos letting her know like really nice things about herself. Like a bully would. Let's like online bully right now. I think it'd be an awesome cruel prank. For those of you who aren't as cool as I am and aren't already standing this beautiful brilliant person, Amiya is a brilliant artist who runs an art commentary channel and the first time I ever watched any of her videos was when she actually made one on me titled Creepshow Art Missed the Mark with her apology video, which obviously is a critical video of myself. I watched that video, I think the day it was made, and straight up, I left it thinking, holy shit, this girl's amazing. Like, she was criticizing me and holding me accountable things, and usually that's like less than comfy, but I left the video in a new state of mind and immediately subscribed to her because I saw her as someone whose opinion I respected and wanted to hear more from. I hate to be one of those people and do like, the whole I was subbed when she had this many subscribers things but legitimately I was I stand. I like subscribed immediately. I stand so hard. From that time onwards, I have watched her continue to grow and continue to thrive. She has made countless videos on various hard to touch on topics online and she handles them with such care and poise. It's amazing. There have even been times when I'm about to make a video on a certain subject matter and talk about something and I will have seen she already talked about it at length and I opt not to because she already stated everything better in a clever way and did a better job than I could ever hope to. Frankly, I think you guys should should all go and subscribe to her because her work honestly speaks for itself. Her art is good, her commentary is spot on, and as someone who's been critiqued by her in the past, I can honestly state I believe she's coming from like the best place. She just wants to see people do better, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So go subscribe to her and like be like so mean and like comment something positive about her on her latest video. I think if we all like went over there and was just like really nice to her, that it would show her, you know, it would be like, haha, take that. <laughs> And because of how highly Shannon thinks of me, I do believe that this video is absolutely necessary. Because I know that she understands that my concern is also coming from a place of wanting her to improve, and also because it's important to allow space for open dialogue and discussion about these recent allegations to exist. I also want to clarify now that I'm going to be keeping a lot of my own opinions about this relatively minimal, as to not muddy up the facts of the situation or give any biased takes. Because like I said, although I have been associated with Shannon, I am still able to provide fair commentary about the situation at hand. Disclaimer over, onto the main part of the video. Hi guys, gals, gays, and theys, I'm Omnia, and today we're going to be talking about Creepshow Art, otherwise known as Shannon. Recently, she has been faced with some allegations, and I wanted to discuss them from an unbiased place because I thought it would be interesting to see what can be definitively said about it. I already took like five minutes on the disclaimer, so let's just get started. Creepshow Art, known by her real name, Shannon, is an art commentary channel known for talking about literally whatever she wants. Whether it's murderers or artists, other YouTubers or weird creeps on TikTok, Shannon always seems to have something to say about the crazy place we inhabit and the crazy people we share it with. And she also just so happens to have half a million people to witness it all. It's very fun, funky, and fresh. However, Shannon has recently been accused of posting on the anonymous internet forum lolcow.farm, which is essentially a gossip site specifically targeted at online figures who have some semblance of an audience. 
audience, whether that be influencers, YouTubers, or other types of content creators. Users are anonymous, which allows them to post their brutally honest, often extremely harsh or mean opinions of the online figures they gossip about. However, as is common with most image boards and forums, a few rules exist in order to keep the anons in line. These rules and values are upheld on their site both globally and in topic-specific settings. When checking the global rules of the site, I noticed three that were particularly relevant to the accusations Shannon is currently facing. Rule number eight, which states, do not attempt to use lolcow.farm for attention or profit. Rule number nine, which states, do not deceptively post about yourself in the third person for any reason. And lastly, rule number 10, do not advertise. In regards to topic-specific rules, rule number two and rule number 3.2 are also relevant. Rule number two blatantly states, staff will revoke your anonymity if you attempt to deceive lolcow.farm. Rule number 3.2 also states, do not share names, pictures, or social media of people unrelated to the drama being discussed, for example, family members, friends, or co-workers. These rules will be brought up at a later time in this video, but just keep them in mind. Unsurprisingly, Shannon has a board of her own on lolcow where multiple anonymous users either critique, insult, or even straight up trash her. One of the admins of the site recently posted these allegations under Creepshow's board, which goes as follows, quote, As many users in this thread are aware, Shannon's posts on lolcow haven't exactly been subtle. We've decided to compile her post history after she escalated her behavior by sharing her sister's social media in order to deflect from criticism towards herself. Beyond that, she has been anonymously promoting her videos and patron slash YouTube membership to farmers, which I'm assuming refers to the users of the site, and making posts about herself to either white knight or insult herself. For many years, we've had a policy to reveal post histories of users who go to great lengths to use lolcow.farm to propel their own online presence. You can read the full post history here. The admin then attaches a link to a thread compilation of all of Creepshow's alleged post history over the past two to three years. This is where shit kind of starts to hit the fan, because remember those rules I talked about earlier? You'll see as we dive deeper into Creepshow's post history, she broke a lot of the site rules I underscored, ultimately leading the admins to make the executive decision to revoke her anonymity and expose the fact that these posts were indeed uploaded and posted from Shannon's IP address. Fair warning right now before we take a closer look at her alleged post history, some of this stuff may be a little disturbing to some viewers, including certain slurs, so just keep that in mind as we move forward. Creepshow has allegedly posted on lolcow from as early as November 30th, 2018 to as recently as April 20th of this year, with a total of 292 posts. That's a lot of content to sift through, so instead of reading all of them, let's just talk about the most insane ones that I found because that's what we're most interested in after all. I've organized the post history section to revolve around five main topics. One, gossip about fellow creators. Two, the really fucked up stuff that was said, which is where the most incriminating things lie. 3. Posts about self-posting and projection 4. Points in time where Shannon argues with herself to manufacture drama and hate and lastly, 5. Posts that are promoting herself or areas where she brags about herself. For one, Creepshow has allegedly used Lil Cow to talk smack about many of her YouTube connections or simply other influencers, such as fairly popular streamers. One example of this is Saikuno, where Shannon supposedly said, quote, So Saikuno uses those filters that beauty YouTubers use in order to appear younger and more attractive? That's so weird. He literally has the most fucked up skin I have seen on an Asian man. The fact that the difference is that bad is insane. She also allegedly commented on Corp's husband fans who tattooed his avatar or name onto their bodies despite making two public videos in his favor, playing Among Us with him at one point and overall singing his praises. It stated, quote, There is something so genuinely funny about a girl getting his avatar tattooed under her boobs. She'd be unfuckable at that point. Furthermore, as I've stated earlier, she has also gossiped about YouTubers with whom she either currently has connections with or former connections with, such as Ready to Glare, D'Angelo Wallace, Hopeless Peaches, and Toby Majestic. Ready to Glare, who is a YouTuber Shannon has collaborated with in the past and shouted out multiple times on her own channel, even going so far as to draw fan art for her, has been mentioned in the post history as well. Shannon supposedly stated that Ready to Glare is, quote, is to women are predators too, guys, as Blair White is to these trans people are weird. 
Edwin's Generation, another drama YouTuber, has also been mentioned in Creepshow's alleged post history. An anonymous user in the thread began speculating about Edwin's sexuality, which, mind you, is none of their business, but I digress. They stated, quote, When I started watching him, as some of his videos were popping up on my YouTube feed, I was convinced he was gay. Eventually, weeks or even months later, I end up on some stream and he mentions his girlfriend? Most confusing moment, to be fair. Creepshow responded with, quote, They're in a long distance relationship though, so it doesn't really change anything. He only has to pretend to like women at most one month of the year, which yikes. Speculating about someone's sexuality in this month of all months? Unacceptable, but continuing on. As for D'Angelo Wallace, a literal legend by the way, Creepshow also spoke very poorly of him on Lil Cow despite speaking incredibly highly of him on her YouTube channel and other social media, consistently commenting in support of him. She states, quote, He's worse than Creepshow. At least she had the ability to grow and is doing something completely different than what she started with. He's doing the same thing on repeat, acting like he's doing something big, and now admits to creeping on Lil Cow. And, quote, D'Angelo is the type of guy that everyone pretends to like, but no one really does. He tried to get in tight with a lot of them, and because he talked about drama and made Holly, she's referring to Holly Brown, an artist that was outed for tracing art, look like a tool. They befriended him for safety. I think Holly sucks, but before his video came out, no one in the community said shit. Then she decided to rebrand and delete, and is pretty much at zero still. They're all scared of that. Expanding off of my previous mention of Holly, Holly Brown was also discussed briefly in the posts. Shannon allegedly stated, quote, I think Holly is laying low because she's scared of Creepshow. Creepshow has been asking for people to DM her about Holly's Kickstarter and I feel like another video is coming. Essentially, Shannon is supposedly bragging about how scared Holly Brown is of her and how she planned on creating a new video on her at the time. In regards to Toby Majestic, Creepshow had a few things to say about her as well. If you aren't already aware, though if you're even a casual viewer of mine, you would know all too well who I'm talking about, but um, anyways, child. Toby Majestic was an art commentary YouTuber who made a well-received critique video of Shannon last year titled The Folds of Creepshow Art. The original video has since been privated as Toby was outed to be somewhat of a problem herself in her own drama, but that story is a very long and labored one that we don't have the time to discuss now. A re-upload of the video does exist on YouTube, which you can find if you simply search up The Folds of Creepshow show art, but Shannon allegedly called Toby, quote, Shannon 2.0 on Lil Cow, stating that she is a, quote, knock-off creep show, but worse in every way. The last person we will discuss in relation to the gossip section of Shannon's post history is Hopeless Peaches. Hopeless Peaches is another art commentary channel who was ex-friends with Creepshow Art. The two creators had a falling out around March of last year and Hopeless Peaches has by far received the worst gossip about Shannon's post history on Lil Cow. And let me make this very clear now, I'm setting my own personal gripes aside for both Toby Majestic and Hopeless Peaches as I don't personally have the best relationship with either of them to simply provide the facts of this situation. I don't want Want anything mixed up, I'm simply acting as a third party to this whole situation in order to expose what was said on Shannon's post history. I obviously don't condone any of this and I hope the best for all of these creators in the aftermath of finding out about these posts and allegations, especially since these posts are definitely hard to hear. Again, I just wanted to make that abundantly clear now. Shannon's earliest post about Peaches was on September 19th, 2019, where she allegedly stated that Hopeless Peaches quote, sucks Creepshow's dick. Like every video she made, Creepshow would make the same video but with more swearing a day earlier. The post continued on March 10th despite the fact that two days earlier Shannon posted this on her public Twitter profile, at Hopeless Peaches. I love this kid. This is like my daughter. She called herself 4K's Creepshow Art and like, I love that. But she has her own mind that is so smart and creative. I love and appreciate her more than she knows and she will continue to do amazing things. On Lil Cow, the post includes a screenshot of Peaches Twitter and underneath it states, quote, I just checked and despite her tweeting at Creepshow Art before this, she posted this and now doesn't follow her at all, but keeps talking about how someone she admired disappointed her and she was shaking and crying talking about it. What a cow. Shannon allegedly continues trashing Peaches, stating that, quote, she has 10,000 subscribers and acts like a baby. The next post includes a screenshot of Creepshow subtweeting Peaches and states, quote, I agree, what a fucking
fucking slime. Additionally, a lot of Peaches and Creepshow's falling out has recently been detailed in two videos created by Shannon as well as two created by Peaches, with one of those videos being unlisted. These videos were released as a result of the Hopeless Peaches drama, which, similarly to the Toby drama, is a long and labored story that we don't have the time to really dive into here. Continuing on with the post history, Shannon continues with, quote, she's so overdramatic, she's making Creepshow art look good. So let me get this straight. This girl, Hopeless Peaches, goes around befriending YouTubers, rips off their content, says exactly what they say in less interesting ways, and then after that person puts them on their channel and asks their followers to follow this clone, she turns into a bitch? What a fucking cow. I want to figure out who else she has done this to because how she talks, it can't just be Shannon. This is disgusting. Indeed, uh, this is. Shannon continues, quote, she definitely hits me as someone who just sits on their ass and whines instead of trying to change things. I used to watched some of her videos about a year ago about her horrible living situation and other past things, and every problem seemed to just be, I couldn't be bothered to do something, so now I'm just gonna cry about it on YouTube. Like, if it wasn't a big enough issue for you to do shit, then obviously it wasn't a problem for you. You're just blowing it out of proportion now so you can get internet sympathy points. Eight months ago, around the height of the Toby drama, Shannon supposedly stated, quote, I'm glad she's calling out Peaches now. Peaches seems like such a leech. <sighs> that was a long ass section, a lot of posts to sift through. In total, we just detailed a few of the posts that were centered around eight separate creators that Creepshow has either been affiliated with, continues to affiliate with, or has been loosely tied to in the past. Obviously, gossip isn't illegal and Shannon didn't break any site rules with the things she may have said about the creators discussed here. However, if this really is Shannon, many of the things stated here are downright embarrassing and deplorable. It comes off extremely underhanded to be kind and friendly to someone publicly and absolutely disgusting to them in an anonymous forum, which is what makes this entire situation so troubling. Obviously, I have my opinions about whether or not these allegations are true, but I'll be discussing more about that in the second part of this series that I plan on releasing after this video. However, again, if these allegations are indeed true, this definitely paints Shannon as a fake, two-faced, and extremely manipulative person who may smile in your face but attempt to rally hate against you behind closed doors. But unfortunately, that's not even the worst of this post history. Let's continue on to the really, really gross stuff that lies within this thread. Once again, a fair warning is probably necessary here, as some of the topics and screenshots mentioned here may be disturbing for some viewers, including homophobic slurs, mentions of real life game over, and overall just extremely mean girl shit. If you're down for that, then let's just get started. It's not surprising that image board culture is a little toxic, <laughs> and Shannon supposedly fit that role really well with some of these posts. I don't know who this is referring to, but Shannon stated, quote, her face is so bloated, I bet when she glances down the skin bunches, my god. She also apparently spoke about Holly Brown and someone named Racist Uncle. It states, quote, I mean, you could ask Racist Uncle the same question about why she's so obsessed with Holly Brown. She even goes through her hours long live streams and is obsessed with every little thing about her. Really though, I understand. Holly Brown has several threads here. She's milky and cringy. Racist Uncle is just like her. Chubby, ugly, bad at art, yet she also has tricked herself into thinking she's good and she's a pick me while we're at it. Shannon also allegedly came after Racist Uncle's husband, insulting him for his body weight and mental illnesses. The post states, quote, who's going to talk about the fact that Racist Uncle's in a green card marriage with a fat autistic man who has a hand fetish. The posts get progressively worse every other day, even going so far as to use a slur commonly used to refer to transgender folks in a highly offensive way. Not only that, but even goes on to use another offensive slur that targets trans men in specific. And just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, I was surprised yet again because the next post is where Shannon uses the R word extremely liberally and clowns on this person for self-posting when like, 
that's literally what she's being accused of doing too, which is extremely ironic, but alright. Some of these posts were made literally three months ago. Shannon allegedly stated in the art commentary community thread, quote, anyone else find it weird that whenever these people are called out, they say they're going to game over themselves? She also supposedly leaked her sister's social media on her own thread, which broke rule 3.2, which I had mentioned earlier. The post reads, quote, I didn't save it, but the gist was Shannon's sister is in the hospital for something, we don't know what, and she put her as her emergency contact. However, when Shannon reached out to her to try to figure out what was going on, her sister blocked her and said she was invading her privacy. She also said something along the lines that her family was neglecting her, even though Shannon had reached out. It's really weird. A couple years ago, I found her sister's Twitter because she talked about it in a story time, and she's definitely insane. And then Shannon proceeded to link her sister's Twitter, which I decided to block out for privacy reasons. This post is what essentially pushed the admins over the edge, leading them to expose all of Creepshow's alleged post history, which, you know, I completely understand. The fact that Shannon's sister landing in the ER inconvenienced Shannon so much that it allegedly prompted her to post her sister's social media on Lulcow to convince Anons how insane she is, I would also be pushed over the edge by that. But thankfully, <laughs> we got through the absolute worst of the posts. From here on out, it is mostly projection, fabrication, and self-promotion, which are mostly violations in relation to the rules of Lulcow. These include posts where Shannon is promoted, hyped up, or talked positively about, times where she allegedly argues with herself to manufacture drama and hate, and where she accuses others of being self-posters despite the fact that that is exactly what she is being accused of doing herself. Let's just begin with the self-post projection. Despite the fact that these allegations directly accuse Shannon of being a self-poster, a lot of these posts are accusing others of being self-posters and speaking negatively of those who self-post on low-cow threads. It's a bit ironic, you know? A bit contradictory, even. A lot of these posts are essentially just Shannon telling others, quote, I have never seen a more obvious self-post, or quote, this one definitely sounds like a self-post. The one that really has me reeling is, quote, if you need a lull cow self post for some internet points, well, that is super sad. Yeah, it is super sad. Again, like I said, if this really is Shannon, which I am inclined to believe, these posts serve as instances where she projects onto others because she is the one who is self posting, not the other people she is replying to. This is just me speculating, but I think she projects as a defense mechanism for her ego by denying the existence of the impulses and qualities she dislikes in herself by attributing them to other users and anons on the site. And that's a sign that she may know that what she's doing is wrong. Or maybe I'm looking too deeply into this. Let's briefly go over the instances where Shannon allegedly talks to herself, argues with herself, and replies to herself in the post history in order to manufacture drama or dialogues between anons. In this post history, there are instances where Shannon talks to herself and even argues with herself. For example, here she is posing as two separate people when in reality both of them are her. The first post states, quote, If people want to work in the industry, it's best to go to college. If you want to be an internet artist, at least take an art class or learn the basics. I don't know, it's just something I wish predominant online artists would learn to do. Sorry for bad English. Then the second post reads, quote, Dude, it's so annoying when newbies, cause I'm I'm not gonna say that word. Come to this site and don't read the rules. First, fucking sage your post, and second, no one gives a fuck about your English. To anyone who would have read that on the site, you would think that they were two separate anons. But obviously, Shannon did that to throw people off or make people think that two different people were replying to each other, only for both of those replies to be hers. She seems like she wasn't interested in being sussed out or discovered, which is why she fabricated arguments and interactions with different people, despite being the puppet master all along. There are plenty of other examples of this in the post history as well, I just used this one because I felt that it illustrated my point most seamlessly. Now that we've got that out of the way, the last thing that I wanted to discuss about Creepshow's alleged post history is her self-promotion, and this will lead us right into the next video I'm planning on making about this whole situation. But judging by the fact that Shannon has already released a community post passing blame onto another individual for posing as her on Lolcow, I feel like this last part I want to discuss is extremely relevant to counteract that claim. Let's discuss areas of Shannon's alleged post history where she promotes herself, her art, her channel, and her YouTube memberships. 
Remember those locale rules I mentioned earlier? Let me refresh your memory about them since Rule 8 and Rule 10 are very relevant to this section of the video. Rule number 8 states, quote, do not attempt to use locale.form for attention or profit, and Rule number 10 states, quote, do not advertise. Rule 2 also states, quote, staff will revoke your anonymity if you attempt to deceive locale.form. These are all important to keep in mind because as I was casually combing through the post history, I found plenty of examples where Shannon just straight up tells other anonymous users how much she likes herself, how much her art is improving, and even plugging her YouTube membership at one point. Let's pull up the screenshots. The first instance of self-promotion in Creepshow's post history was back in June of 2019 where Shannon posted a compilation picture of her own art and stated, quote, she's gotten better. I can actually look at her shit now and not hate it. She also defended herself against the users on Lolcow who were speaking poorly of her. She supposedly stated, quote, Shannon wasn't even a channel during the Spockter shit and made an apology after the James Charles shit came out and deleted her initial video on it saying she no longer agreed with it. I like her, but know she's done some like, I'm not like other girls shit, but how are you going to be upset with her for something that she acknowledged? She even refused to talk about the Slaza situation because of James Charles. Why the fuck are we still talking about her on this? This screenshot honestly gave me like alt vibes. What I mean by that is a lot of creators have alt or throwaway accounts where they speak about themselves in a more positive light if they are under fire for something or defend themselves under the guise that they are somebody else. However, the problem is alts don't work on Locow as you can tell. Because they are able to track your IP address, they can tell that it's you no matter how much you pose as someone else. I'm speculating here again, but Shannon probably felt that she was being unfairly fatigued on the site and simply wanted to defend herself and insert her own opinion of herself and how she felt she handled the James Charles situation well, but none of the Anons felt the same way. Let's continue. The next post reads, quote, Genuinely surprised at how well this video covers everything. Didn't know who Shannon was before, but I like her now. Notice how this is the second time Shannon has stated that she likes herself. She's trying to rally positive attention around herself on the site by deceiving others and making them think that she is some random anonymous user, not the creator she's talking about. Despite all of these being in 2019, Shannon has also allegedly been self-promoting herself as little as four months ago on Lolcow. Here, she promotes her Lily Jean video which at the time was only available to those who had subscribed to her through her YouTube membership. The post states, quote, Crypto Arts video is apparently available now for members only and she's going to be talking a lot about Lily Jean's racism. Again, this is very weird for someone who stalks her and wants to ruin her online reputation to say, but again, I digress. Shannon has also been documented to brag about her finances, how much money she makes, and her sub count. This post states, quote, she said she doesn't rely on YouTube, but I think she makes a considerable amount on it. I've talked to YouTubers her size, and they make at least 20k per month. That mixed with her real life job, she's probably loaded pretending to be poor. Another post reads sarcastically, quote, advertising for her channel? Yes, I am sure Shannon is advertising herself on a channel with less than 100,000 subscribers. Like. I just... <laughs> I don't know, you guys. It reads almost as if she's bragging about how much she would never stoop down to that level. Like, no, I'm so holier than thou, and I'm so above you with my 500,000 subscribers. I don't need to advertise or promote my channel on some other YouTuber's less than 100,000 subscriber content. While simultaneously promoting herself on these lolcow threads for nearly three years at this point, it's a lot to take in, <laughs> but that was the last screenshot I took. I'm sure there's more if anyone cared to take the time to look into it even more, but these were the ones I was most disappointed and shocked by. Let's finally move on to the conclusion because this video has been a bitch to script. It's true that Shannon broke a lot of Lolcow's rules. She used their site to pose anonymously as someone else, and sometimes multiple someones, to deceive users into thinking a certain type of way about her and her associates. She's talked a whole lot of shit, said some really ableist and transphobic slurs, commented on people's skin and bodies, speculated on someone's sexuality, projected onto others, argued with herself to spur some kind of sick reaction, and tried to paint herself in the best light 
quite possible, even acting haughty and self-obsessed at points. She lied and deceived others, took advantage of the forum, and stabbed people who may have trusted and cared about her in the back. All for some temporary brownie points on an anonymous gossip site. I can't say that I'm not deeply disappointed in Shannon over this. Obviously, this video was made only to cover her post history and none of the aftermath after this point, but I plan on making a second video covering Shannon's response, the admin's secondary response, and the response of the audience. I also want to really insert my own opinions on all of this more deeply in that second video, as this one is mostly centered around what has been said and the problems revolving around these posts. Until next time, that's all from me. Thank you, as always, to all my wonderful patrons. Thank you to these five amazing individuals for pledging. I genuinely would not be able to make this content without you. If you would like to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below. Last but not least, a special thank you goes out to Gay Bean Baby on Twitter for this adorable ass fan art. It's literally so cute. I'll catch y'all next time. Bye!